What is the gospel? We have been commanded to believe the gospel. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The scriptures declare in Philippians 2 that Christ Jesus, though He was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied Himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, He humbled Himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So the Gospel contains the truth that God exists, that you have been created by a perfect, holy God who created us to worship Him in spirit and truth. For Jesus Himself said, God is seeking worshipers who will worship Him in spirit and truth. But the problem is, man, even though he was created good, fell from that state. And as we look around us, we can know without a shadow of a doubt that we have a Creator with whom we must give an account. And we are fallen, corrupt. The Bible says that we are in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation. And so because we are fallen, we naturally sin and hate God. But the good news is that while we were at enmity with God, He made us alive together with Christ. So today, I can tell you the truth that if you look to Christ, you'll be saved. Don't look to a weak Savior who might save. For there is a God in heaven who does as He pleases, and none shall stay His hand. No, I proclaim to you a God in heaven who controls all things and decrees everything that has ever happened. From eternity past, He created the world. And today, He sustains the world by His power, by the word of His power. It exerts no effort upon Him to hold all things into existence. Even your very heart and mind and matter are held by His power. So the Scriptures again declare, and it is a living word, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all must give an account with him who lives. For God is not dead as the atheists say, but he is risen. So he was crucified as I previously mentioned, and so therefore, God has highly exalted Him and bestowed on Him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So if you think that ten years ago or two years ago, or 20 years ago, you said some sinner's prayer in some church meeting at your mother's knee and that you are a Christian because of these things, I say no. Unless you believe in Christ, you are dead in your sins and trespasses and you walk according to the crooked and twisted generation in the midst that we walk in. So we must repent and turn away from our sin. We must turn to Christ and be saved. You must hold fast to the word of life unless you believed in vain. Today, we are in a nation that predominantly, predominantly declares that they are Christians. But I tell you, Christians are those who have been born again by the Holy Spirit through the resurrection power, even the resurrection power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And so that's the good news. But the bad news is this that unless you repent, you will perish. For the wages of sin is death, and after death comes the judgment. But today, if you turn to Christ, you will be saved. You might not be saved from the consequences of your sin in this life, but you will be saved with Him with whom we must give an account. For the wrath of God abides on the unbeliever right now. But if you repent because of this message, 
of reconciliation, you will be saved. Turn to Christ and be saved today. And do good works in keeping with repentance. Repent of any partiality you have shown from loving your neighbor as yourself. But first love God. You must be reconciled to Him. And then you can love your neighbor. Love the little babies in the wombs of your neighbor. Repent of pro-lifeism. Of saying that they can kill babies. Oh, for a couple of reasons. Well, I tell you, 60 million babies today, their blood screams out for justice because of the wickedness of this nation. Today, abolish abortion. Today, repent and trust in Christ. Today, call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved.